Hi everybody and welcome to your last video for your summer packet. In this video we're going to start with a little bit of a review of some function shapes that you should be familiar with in order to be successful in this class. So what we did for you is we actually made sort of an organizer for you so that you can review these different types of functions. For example, one of the things we're going to require you to know is that x to the third looks like this graph. Now it's really the shape of the function that's the most important. So I, if I were you, I would pause the video and just take a minute and review some of these shapes. They start on this page and they continue on the next page of your notes. What I'm not going to do is go through all of these shapes with you. You guys can kind of take some time and study these on your own. What I do want to spend some time talking about is why we need to know the shapes of these functions. In our previous video, we talked about how if you look at a graph, you can find the value of a limit. In order to do this successfully, sometimes it's necessary to use your knowledge of these parent functions and transformations to sketch yourself a little picture to look at. For example, if I said find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x cubed, step one is going to be to sketch a picture of what x cubed looks like. So, I would sketch on my paper an x cubed graph. Now I know that an x cubed graph looks like this. Using that picture, now I'm going to try to find the limit as x goes towards negative infinity. Now if x is going towards negative infinity, that's this side of the graph on the x-axis. So if I follow the graph this way, I can see that when x goes to the left, the y values go down, 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 which means the value of this limit would be negative infinity. For problem number two, again, I want to find the limit of the absolute value of x plus two. So I'm going to sketch myself a little picture so that I can visualize what this would look like. Absolute value of x plus two would be an absolute value function shifted up two places. Now an absolute value function looks like a v for value. I'm just shifting it up. Since I want to check the limit as x approaches zero, which is a two-sided limit, I'm going to check both sides as x approaches zero, which is here. From the left side and from the right side, both are getting closer to a y value of two. So that would be my limit. For problem number three, I want to check the limit as x approaches zero from the left of one over x. Now one over x is a graph that looks like this. It has two parts because there's a vertical asymptote in the middle. If I want to check the limit as x approaches zero, which is where the asymptote is located, from the left side, which is this side, I can see that as I get closer to this line, my y values are going down, which means they're negative infinity. Finally, if I want to check the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 squared, what I'm going to do is sketch a picture. Now x minus 2 squared is a parabola that was shifted to the right two places. So here's my parabola. As I approach x being 2 from both the left and the right, because I need to check both sides, both sides are approaching this point right here, which has a y value of 0. It would be very difficult to do these problems if you didn't know the shapes of these graphs. If you somehow get stuck and you don't remember the shape of a graph, one option you always have to be able to make a graph is to make a table of values. So here's an example. Let's say I asked you to find the limit as x approaches negative infinity 
of x cubed and you just totally blanked out and didn't know what x cubed looks like. What we could do is start by making an x, y table and plugging in some values. If I plug negative 2 into this equation, I get negative 8. If I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1. 0 gives me 0, 1, and then 8. Then I could use those values to sketch myself a picture. negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8, and it would help me remember the shape of that graph. Now obviously it's always easier if you actually know the shapes of the graph ahead of time, but if you get stuck your backup plan should always be to make a table of values for that function so that you don't have to just quit on the problem. You should always have a resource or a plan, a strategy for figuring out those graphs. Alright, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon.